Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show brought to you by Datastax Academy, where we bring you the latest news and interview technical experts to help you succeed in building large-scale distributed systems. Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show. I'm Jeff Carpenter, and I'm here with Dikan Gu, who is with uh, Instagram. It's part of Facebook, of course, and he's going to be telling us a little bit about the usage of Apache Cassandra at Instagram. So can you tell me a little bit about your background to start out with? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Deacon. So I'm currently a software engineer working at Instagram Cassandra team. So um, we're working on providing Cassandra as a general key value storage system in Instagram. Before that, I was working on the development of Apache HDFS at the Facebook data infrastructure team. Nice. Okay, so you've got uh, kind of a long history in this big data world. Then mm -hmm. it's not just working with Apache Cassandra. But yes, yeah. sends back. Mm -hmm. So, how did you get introduced to um, using Cassandra, and, and how did you get started with it at Instagram? Sure. So, um, in Instagram, like we use it, we use a lot of open source technologies. Yeah. Um, and uh, like we started to use Cassandra at the very early days. So I was transferred from Facebook to Instagram in 2014. At that time, we, uh, the Instagram infrastructure team was a very small team. We managed a lot of open source technologies like Django, Apache Cassandra, Celery, etc. Um, and we had a really good experience about the reliability and availability of Apache Cassandra. We started with Cassandra version 1.2. Um, running local SSDs on AWS environment. The cluster was small at the beginning, so as the Cassandra team in Instagram. We did not even have people full-time working on Cassandra at that time. Nobody? Yeah, no, like, okay. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so then like as Instagram grows, like um, we put more and more use cases in Cassandra. We also founded the Cassandra team, a, dedic a dedicated team to provide Cassandra as a service in Instagram. So today we are running, you know, like thousands of Cassandra servers across multiple data centers in Instagram. Okay, good. Okay, so I have a, a couple of just things to follow up with you here. So. Mm -hmm. um, your story sounds kind of typical to the way uh, uh, Cassandra usage happens at a lot of companies where one team starts using it yeah. and then they're starting to grow their cluster, they start figuring it out, other teams are mm -hmm. like, hey, does that actually work? Sure. Oh, what yeah. do you mean? Okay, let's get on this. Sure. And then pretty soon you actually need um, kind of an ops team. Yes. Is that, that Cassandra team is, a, is kind of an ops team? Yeah, so yeah. we did both at the beginning. Like yeah. We did like the operations maintenance and also like we are doing the, the development on the client API, okay. the, the client abstraction. Yeah. So basically like we want to provide a high level abstractions for Instagram, you know, product teams so that like we can hide the complexity of Cassandra original API to provide you know faster um, iterations for our product oh, awesome. teams. Okay, so yeah. you're actually doing you're providing a capability on top, an abstraction layer on top. Yeah. yeah. Do you also provide like data modeling consultation and advice, or I've seen this happen yes, do, yeah. a lot of times in organizations where yeah. you really need that um, that uh, capacity, you know, mm -hmm. that competency um, mm -hmm. to really be able to provide good data modeling guidance to teams so they don't. Mm -hmm. kind of mess things up. Sure. Yeah, especially at the beginning. Like, yeah. you know, like, um, for a lot of teams, they do not have in enough experience with Apache Cassandra. Right. So we need to, like, go through together with them about the data modeling, about, like, um, what kind of, uh, um, what kind of uh, table properties, like the conversion strategy or the TTL they should use. Right. And then gradually, like, we hide everything, like, into the abstractions, so that what they so so that so that today, for our product teams, what they want to what they need to do is only to pick one abstraction, okay. and then like they do not need to worry about like the what compression strategy they should use. They do not need to about like which cluster, which actual class, which actual cluster they should put in their use case. Okay. So all these are like you know handled by our team. Awesome. Okay, so 
you're an API provider mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time to these teams. What mm -hmm. are the guarantees? Like you have some SLAs that you're giving these teams as yes. part of that? Yeah. So as a service, you know, like we provide, you know, SOA on the reliability and the performance of Cassandra. Okay. So in Instagram, majority Cassandra, majority Cassandra requests are online requests. Yeah. So in order to provide a reliable and a responsive user experience, we have very tight SOA on those metrics. So for example, for reliability, we are providing a five nines reliability to wow. our customers. Which means, you know, at any time, the client failure rate should be less than 0.001%. Right. And for the performance, we are actively monitoring the, um, the throughput and the latency of different clusters, especially the P99 read latency. So we have done a lot of tunings and improvements of Apache Cassandra in order to provide, you know, high performance to our customers. Gotcha. Okay, so are there any like, metrics in particular that you're tracking that are the most helpful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what do you really key in on that helps you know sure. how you're doing? Sure. Yeah. So, for example, for the reliability, yeah. we are you know, monitoring the total number of requests and also the okay. total number of fa failed requests. You know, right. Um, so, given like those two inputs, we can easily calculate the what's the failure rate for our customers. Okay. And then, for example, like we average, we have an average window of five minutes, and then like we want to provide, you know, in any five minutes window, the failure rate should be less than zero point zero zero one percent. Okay. That's how we track the reliability SOA. Right. So we do similar things for performance by monitoring, by collecting and monitoring the latency, the P99 latency, or even P999 latency on the client side. Okay. So in, in Instagram, like we have a huge dashboard to show like the live metrics, the live reliability and the performance metrics. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So what's the, like, what would you say is the most common um, corrective action? Is it just add more nodes? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so for the reliability, like, um, so actually, you know, Cassandra's architecture allows us to tolerant small number of downloads or failed nodes yes. in Cassandra. So, which means like um, a single node or a few nodes go down will not trigger, you know, SLA or right. large number of failures for us. So in that case, like... You can absorb some, yeah. a pretty good number of down nodes probably yes. with the size clusters that you have. Yes. So in that case, like we have, uh, you know, a production engineering team, yeah, which will help us to, you know, um, automate a lot of, uh, like, for example, like node replace tools, yeah, or even the cluster expansion tools which allow us to quickly, you know, um, replace those, those uh, downloads or expand the, capaci uh, expand the cluster when we hit the limitation of the capacity. Okay. Yeah. And for the performance, um, you know, like we have done a lot of GC tunings as the early days. You know, try different heap size, try different, uh, yeah. you know, parameters for the CMS. Um, that's no. the tricky stuff. That's that. That's kind of yeah. like that last mile of configuration that's going to squeeze those last ounces of performance out. Yes, for you. exactly. Yeah, and it was like very hard for us to find a common set of uh, settings for across all uh, use cases across all yeah. clusters. Of course, in a lot of times we have to do the tunings, you know, per cluster. So, which actually like um, more work for you? More work for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, in recently, like we start the Cassandra upgrade, which you know upgraded the cl our clusters from two two to three zero, which like um, actually like um, help help us um, on the reliability and the performance. Oh, okay. So you you made that big jump um, mm -hmm. to doing. The upgrade to Cassandra 3.x, yes. which, uh, yeah. t tell me more about that upgrade. Sure, yeah. So, you know, like, um, we started the upgrade process in middle 2017. Okay. So, at that time, you know, like, we already served hundreds of Instagram use cases. Uh, and we are running Cassandra, you know, across multiple data centers, like, across thousands of servers. And we are doing millions of operations per second. Yeah. Um, 
but you know, like we are not using the latest Cassandra. We're mainly using Cassandra 2.1 and 2.2 at okay. that time. Yeah. Um, so there were a lot of changes. A solid release, but. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There were a lot of changes between you know Cassandra 2 and Cassandra 3. So um, it caused a lot of maintenance overhead to us, especially okay. if we want to backport some fixes or new features from right. newer Cassandra versions to our internal versions. So we make we made the de decision to uh, spend effort to upgrade Cassandra to 3.0. Gotcha. So how did you go about deciding with kind of like the first use case to mm -hmm. to make that transition? Mm -hmm. You didn't you didn't just throw everything on 3.0 no. overnight. Yes, of course. Yeah. So um, you know, like as uh, um, infrastructure infrastructure team in Iswan, you know, like we want to minimize the risk, the upgrade risk. Yeah. Yes, because we do not want to um, have regressions on the performance and the reliability after the upgrade. So like... Um, You've already set a level of expectation with your internal customers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, so as a result, so we before upgrade, we created a shadow clusters, you know, to mimic the setup and the traffic on our production clusters. Um, in this, I mean, uh, in this setup, we are able to compare different metrics between Cassandra two and Cassandra three. Um, um, at the beginning, we saw you know big performance regressions right. on the Cassandra three clusters. The P ninety nine read and write latency was actually you know uh, two times worse than our production clusters. But you, uh, okay. yeah. But you know, our goal is to have again no. Before you started tuning, before we started any tuning. Yeah, that's just yeah. baseline. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as I mentioned, our goal is to have no performance or reliability regressions. So, like our engineers spend a lot of time to work together with Apache Cassandra community yeah. to identify the root cause for those regressions and to fix all the regressions in the Cassandra 3. Um, so, so you're, you're identifying bugs and maybe even pushing some bug fixes back toward uh, some things. Yes, so besides the performance fixes we have done, we also like identified some issues in the, for example, in the hints delivery process and also the okay. batch log processing um, process during the upgrade. Okay. So we, we have the fixes internally and we're, we will also open source them to the Apache Cassandra community as well. Okay, so is everything on Cassandra 3 now? Yes, yeah, at, the, at this moment, I'm happy to say like all Cassandra clusters in Instagram are running on 3.0 right now with no performance or reliability regressions. Yes. Excellent. And how long did that whole process take? It took us about six months. Okay. Yeah. To finish, you know, to from the evaluation to actually like upgrade the last server to 3.0 in Cassandra in okay. Yeah. Good. That's a, that's a pretty big effort. Uh, so yeah, I think that I I perked up when you started talking about the shadow clusters because that is the envy probably of many a software engineer yes. um, to have that kind of resource environment. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, if it might have been as easy for you if you didn't have that um, kind of setup where you can actually literally compare the traffic going into two live clusters on two different versions it's the same exact traffic yes i don't know what you would do otherwise yes so that's very important to us and i think there are like different ways to do the shadowing to okay. do the double write for example one way is to ask our product teams to change their business logic yeah. You know, to write to the production cluster and also write to uh, Cassandra 3.0 shadow cluster. Yeah. But, you know, it's not convenient for our product teams and they are not happy to spend the time on plugging another right. Cassandra, you know, request in their business <coughs> logic. So, unfortunately, in Facebook, um, yeah. we have, you know, we can leverage a lot of infrastructure framework from Facebook. So they have a way to, they have a framework to be able to shadow any Swift traffic, Swift based traffic in Facebook. Okay. So in Instagram, like we are heavily using the Swift API in Cassandra. So that like we can plug in or we can configure the Facebook shadowing framework 
yeah. to route or to duplicate the traffic. Oh, that's interesting. So that's to, actually using the Thrift API. Yes, still. the Thrift API. I thought we got rid of that. <laughs> yeah, we got <laughs> got rid of that info. So <laughs> we do we haven't upgraded to four. We yet. really mean it this time in four. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what do you? What's the next big thing? You started talking about four Like, mm -hmm. what, what are you looking forward to coming down the pipeline? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think there are a lot of big things happening in Cassandra community. So for Instagram, like you know, since last year, last year, yeah. we have been working on a very interesting project to make Apache Cassandra's storage engine to be pluggable, and also implement uh, a new RocksDB based storage engine to Cassandra. Okay. Yeah. So our main motivation for this project, you know, is to improve the performance of Apache Cassandra, especially you know the P99 read latency. Um, so we did like you know prototype. We did a benchmark. Yeah. By switching from Cassandra's own storage engine to a new RocksDB based storage engine, we are able to elim eliminate majority of the Java garbage collection overhead, which actually reduced the Cassandra latency significantly. Right. Uh, yeah, and I want to mention like. All our work are open source, and also we are setting up a benchmark framework in AWS in, in, in AWS environment. Okay. So everyone can download our source code, try it in AWS or your local environment, and you will see the difference. Cool. Okay. So I gotta ask. Um, mm -hmm. So you just uh, you just implemented the i storage engine interface, right? Yes. In, yeah. In Cassandra, and yeah. then you were good to go. I'm joking. Like, there's no, there is no such thing, right? Yeah. So, how invasive was it to put RocksDB in? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many things did you have to touch? Um, so basically, like, we are almost uh, touching every component in Cassandra. Okay. So you know, this is because you know, um, for the components in Cassandra, like the read write pass, like the streaming repair, table management, right. etc. Right. All the, based on this. Formats. Yes. Yes. Right. They're, they're coupled together with the storage engine details. By the storage engine, de engine details, I mean the storage. I mean the SS table concept. Right. You know, they are leaking everywhere to all these components. It's SS tables everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Right. So um, we're not trying to fix every leaking um, places. You know, at right. at once. So instead, like we gradually plug the Rocks DB in different components, okay. like the read write pass, right? Like the streaming, which are most critical for us. So like we try to have um, API in the read in the read pass in right. the write pass in the streaming first, right? So that like we can implement a different version of the read pass, a different. Um, have, we can have a different implementation of right. the streaming. So, will there be a little bit more? I'm not trying to lead you here, but will there be a little bit more of the uh, APIs, cleaner APIs around some of those sure. things to make you know the next person that wants to plug in another storage engine that much easier? Sure. Yeah. So, if you um, you know, if you are monitoring the Cassandra community discussions, yeah. So you you will notice like. There had been a discussion on a very big Jira, which it, the title is Cassandra Pluggable Storage Engine. Right. So there are. What's the number? You know. Sorry, I forgot the but number. Some of these, but some of these popular Jiras, yeah. they just become known by their number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, there are a lot of discussions, you know, happening yeah. in that Jira, and yeah. uh, like, um, so personally, like I also I proposed a detailed design doc about how to. Make Cassandra's storage engine to be pluggable. Good. Okay. Um, so, so in that general, I'm not talking about the RocksDB at all. So the purpose is right. to make Cassandra's storage engine to be pluggable first. You know, like to decouple the the storage engine from other components, so that it will improve the test testability of Cassandra right. significantly. Right. So in that general, like I also created, you know. About ten subgenres to reflect every component in Cassandra. For example, like how to reflect the streaming, how to reflect read-write pass. So you know it's such a huge amount of work 
which you know, like I really want everyone in the community to help on that Jira, to help on making Cassandra's storage engine to be truly pluggable. That sounds like a massive undertaking and much appreciated. Thanks for all your, your great work on that. And uh, we have a couple minutes here, so I just wondered if you had any more fun stories about uh, mm -hmm. Cassandra at Facebook, Instagram. Sure, yeah. So, yeah, I think one interesting, interesting story I want to share is that, you know, like um, in Instagram, like we're heavily using Cassandra. So, which means, you know, like about every Cassandra product use cases, they, I mean, more or less, they have some data stored in Apache Cassandra. Yeah, everyone's yeah. got a little bit, right? Yeah. So, and right now, you know, like, um, we're also like trying to see any opportunities of, uh, you know, um, of um, Cassandra use cases in Facebook. So, which means like we want to open our door to more Facebook right. or other use cases as well. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, it's so funny because, uh, you know, most people know this that Cassandra was originally developed in Facebook, at Facebook yeah. and then donated, you know, open sourced, yes. uh, became an Apache project. Meanwhile, like it had ceased to be used at mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then when they acquired Instagram, then it came, kind of came back in. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think Cassandra grows a lot in the community. Right. I want to thank all the, you know, the co community effort, the community developers to make Cassandra a very competitive database system in the world. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dikang, and we'd love to have you on again sometime. And, sure. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Join us next time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.